Hello you guys. I know I'm a day late for Halloween, but I feel like horror movies are a year-round event. So today I'll just be talking about my top five most liked movies. One of these are my favorites, the rest are just ones that I really enjoy, but I didn't really want to try and rack my brain and try and remember what my favorites were. I have a lot that I enjoy. I'll save my favorite one for last, so let me put put it in order. I have my screen open, which just has the synop synopsis or the description of what each movie slash series is. I'm just going to talk about some of it. I won't say the whole entire um, synopsis or description, except for for uh, maybe maybe just one of them just because it's literally like a sentence long it's yeah it's one sentence long so with no commas or anything so that will be probably the easiest which is one of my favorites uh yeah so let's get started again I'm saving my favorite one for last but these aren't in order except for the last one the first four are not in order so first we're going to talk about wrong turn just the first one and not the series i do like the series as well but uh i just want to talk about the first one so if you don't know what wrong turn is it's friends jesse and carly are traveling with pal scott and evan and francine when they have car troubles in west virginia then a motorcyclist crashes into them they're stranded and then they run into inbred hillbillies cannibals that like to murder people <laughs> so that's basically like the description of it I'm trying not to give very many spoilers away in case you haven't seen it it came out in 2003 so if you have watched horror movies you've probably seen this it's definitely not a classic and it's definitely not that good of a movie so I can't really tell you why I like it. I feel like it's more of a nostalgia sort of thing. It was one of the first horror movie series that I watched in completion um, even though the last one came out in like maybe 2017 or 2015. It came out not too long ago. Uh, oh it came out in 2014. So not too bad, I guess. <laughs> but I have to turn off the oven, so I'll be right back. <laughs> Alright, I got the oven off, sorry. <laughs> it's definitely more of a nostalgia sort of thing, as I said. It was the first series that I finished, even though the last one came out in 2014. But I don't know. Uh, my friend watched the first one with me, and we watched one that takes place in a snowstorm, which I think is Bloodline. No, no. Oh, what is that? It might be the second one. Oh, it doesn't show me on here. It might be the second one. No, it has to be the third one, maybe. <laughs> uh, but the one that took place in a ski resort or something that was abandoned. don't know how they got out there, but my friend liked the first one, the first two that we watched together. I wasn't a huge fan of The Last Resort. Uh, definitely kind of strange. <laughs> but yeah I, I couldn't tell you exactly why I like it because it's more like I feel obligated to like it since I have such a history a fond memory of it it's definitely rated R it has a gore and language of course they are not gonna say oh frick when they're getting stabbed and I know in the later ones they have sexual content, but I don't know if- I don't remember if the first one they do. I don't think they do, though. But just keep that in mind, it's rated R for a reason, so don't let children watch it. Unless they're brave. <laughs> I'm sorry, my nose is so itchy. Uh, but yeah, let- let- <laughs> let us move on to the next one, which is Grave Dancers. Now, Again, Grave Dancers definitely is more like a nostalgia sort of thing. Uh, it was a movie that I watched with my dad the first time he moved in with somebody who recently passed away. So me and him and the person that recently passed away 
uh, we watched it together, so I feel like that might be what's influencing me liking it, because it's like, oh, happy memory, happy memory. Um, but this movie is about several college friends go to a funeral, they get drunk for some reason, and then ac accidentally dance on a grave, um, and then they become haunted by malevolent spirits. One is a child pyromaniac, an axe murderer, and the third one is a, um, I don't know how to put it in PG terms, but it is a sexual assaulter. <laughs> That's the only way I can put it without saying the word, and I don't want, you know, people to be like, oh, she said a naughty word, even though I said, I'm pretty sure I've sworn in my videos, but, um, this movie is pretty good. It's It kind of reminds me more of a drama than a horror, because it's a little dramatic. <laughs> it's one of those movies, it's an acquired taste, I should say. It's nothing like Grave Encounters, if you've seen that. It's absolutely nothing like that. It's not found footage, it's not them going to a haunted place. But it is, it's an enjoyable movie. It's good if you're just trying to find something to put on during, like, a party or something. Or you have a guest over and they haven't really seen very many horror movies. This one's kind of a good introductory one. It's not overly scary. Um, there's very- if there is any, I can't think of any, but if there is any, there's very minimal jump scares. Don't watch it with children, though, because it is a bit graphic. Um, with the sexual assaultist. <laughs> uh, they never show it, if I recall. I don't think they show it. Don't take my word on that. I don't think they do. I'm not positive. <laughs> but they do talk about it. The woman who is being haunted by that spirit does go to the hospital, so you can kind of assume what happened from there. But it's, it's pretty good. Um, as I said, a good introductory one. It's not overly scary. It's not overly long. It's like an hour and a half long, which does sound pretty long to some people, but it's not that bad. The acting's good, too. Uh, I'm looking at the cast, but I don't see anybody that is like in anything mega popular. But the director... Oh, so the director went on to do a couple sci-fi horror movies. They did Tales of Halloween, which is a pretty good movie too, and Don't Kill It. That one is a really good movie. I suggest that one. It's like a, it's horror, but funny. I wouldn't say comedy, but I, I suggest it. I don't think it's supposed to be a comedy. I suggest it. Oh, it's a fantasy action. It has some scary parts, but that's a good movie. Anyways, let's move on from Grave Dancers, since I started talking about a completely different movie, and let's move on to a series of sorts. <laughs> so, this one is definitely a controversial one. I want to say I like the series, not just the movie I'm about to talk about. It's not that good. <laughs> even as just a movie. The series isn't very good. It's not very- I think it has a 20% on Rotten Tomatoes. It has a 6.1 on IMDb. Uh, I like the series though, even though the series is about rated the same. But this series is The House of a Thousand Corpses. Now, I've seen this many times. I watched it uh, last night for Halloween. And I watched Amy, and I didn't really care for that too much, but it wasn't that bad. But, House of a Thousand Corpses, I have absolutely no clue why I like it. I think I like Sherry Moore? No, Sherry Moore. Sherry- what's her name? Sherry Moon Zombie. I was gonna say Sherry Moore. <laughs> I like her character as Baby, and I like Tiny a lot. I, I love the little, like- disfigured people in horror movies. That sounds really bad out of context, but I really, really like their characters. I was really confused. Every time I watch it, 
maybe because it's supposed to be like a 70s-esque slaughterhouse movie, and I've never seen those. <laughs> um, I'm really confused about the editing and what's going on, but let me say, Dr. Satan, Satan and whatever the heck that robot monster guy at the end is, it's not really a spoiler because it's hinted at the whole time. Well, Dr. Satan is, and the person I'm talking about is in the movie for like, I don't know, maybe five minutes tops. Super cool. I really like that. It's a gore fest. It does have sexual stuff in it. Don't watch it with children. The people are really weird. I really like the clown captain something, spra sprawling or something like that. R.I.P. the person that played it played him. I can't say their names, I'm not even going to try. But oh, that movie, the series I like. I can't tell you why. The next movie in the series is Devil's Reject. That got 54 on Rotten Tomatoes and a 6.8, so not too bad. Um, I can't tell you anything about that one because it spoils. It, well, it doesn't really spoil the ending, but uh, I can't tell you about it. And then Three from Hell just came out in 2019. I've seen that one too. 52%, 5.7, yikes. Um, <laughs> but Sid Hagen, H uh, H A I G is the man who passed away. So rest in peace. <laughs> I already said that, but I didn't want to try and say it again. On a couple of the websites, sorry, the thing's dripping. Uh, a couple of the websites, they have like four out of four on Robert, Bert, R Robert, Roger Robert, maybe, reviews. Um, but I really like the characters, the Sherry, the Sherry Moore, the baby who's played by Sherry Moon Zombie, I liked. Um, it made me chuckle a few times. Not devil's reject or three from hell house of a thousand corpses um but yeah it's a pretty good movie i've i'm a fan of rob zombie just in general so that might influence it a little bit but um house of a thousand corpses pretty good horror horror flick because it takes place the night before and the day of halloween so you know perfect phenomenal amazing but yeah <laughs> let's move on before, you know, I start talking more. The next series is the Stranger series. Strangers with an S, I should say. So the Stranger series, I love it. I will be honest, I love, love, love it. I'm not too sure, so I'm pretty sure uh, Wolves at the Door, I had to scroll down to read it, is part of the series. I don't know why. I want to see if the director is part of it, because I feel like the person who, Brian, Bert, Bert, I don't know, uh, <laughs> Brian, I'll just call him that, who made Strangers made it, but I don't see it. I don't know, it just gives me a Strangers sort of vibe. But anyways, I like the Strangers Pray at Night too, but we'll just talk about the first one. So the first one, oh! I didn't read what House of a Thousand Corpses are, but it's okay. Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, how, uh, this is based, loosely based off a real crime that happened. It's a lot different than the real crime. That's why it's loosely based off of it. But it's about these two unhappily married people who are just hanging out at their house after they get in a fight or something. Uh, well, it's vacation house I should say and then a stranger comes to the door and she's like help I I'm injured my car crashed and then can I use your phone and then she leaves and then the strangers come and mess everything up and uh, murder them basically uh, I think I don't remember I think it might be implied they're murdered I don't remember but that's not really a spoiler either because it's been out since 2008, and a lot of popular YouTubers made parody, par parodies, joke videos of them. But I love this series. It genuinely did scare me the first time I saw it. I don't even remember how old I was in 2008, but I saw it when it was released, so, you know, 
not good for my little tiny baby mind. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I couldn't even tell you how old I was back then. I was probably nine, maybe. I hope not. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a good movie. It's I wouldn't really recommend it for a starting movie if you're trying to introduce someone into horror because it does have jump scares. There's no sexual assault in it, so thumbs up for that. Uh, I don't. It doesn't have like torture, like ripping out fingernails or anything in it, but more psychological. Obviously, it's people chasing them around their own house. <laughs> it's. It's definitely. It could be a beginner's horror movie, I guess. There's not really a baseline for what's beginners and what's not, but it depends on the age of the person and what scares them, of course, because you don't want to introduce, like, a 13-year-old to something that will traumatize them forever, you know? Like, you can introduce them to child's play because they obviously, well, I would hope by then they know that dolls won't really kill them if they're 13, or, like, the ring or something. Though I did believe the ring was re was real at that age, and for some reason I would watch the videotape on YouTube and hope that I got a call from the ring. Don't know why, but anyways, <laughs> The Strangers is a good series. Cray at Night, um, I don't think it was as as good. Let's see. Yeah, it's got a much worse rating, but this one has a lot more jump scares. Uh, it's, hmm, it says it's loosely based off of something that happened in the director's real, real life. I know that the original Strangers, I think it was based off the, Oh, I don't even want to try and say it because I feel like that'd be disrespectful to <laughs> mispronounce it. You can Google it. Um, uh, it's definitely very loosely based off of it, but if you read about the crime, you'll be able to tell it's based off of that. So let's move on <laughs> to my favorite. Sorry about my squeaky chair once again. So this is one of my all-time favorite movies. I am sorry, I have such an itchy, itchy, itchy face. So this one is not a horror movie meant for children. I don't think any horror movies really should be for children, even though that is hypocritical since I've been watching movies since I was like five, horror movies, not just movies, since I was like five. However, this one is graphic. It icky. <laughs> it has sexual assault in it. Very, very, very graphic gore. <laughs> and a child murder and other things that's not shown. The murder's not shown, but it's talked about. And other things you wouldn't want to, you know, <laughs> watch with a child. So, this is the Perkipsy or Hipsy. I heard people call it Hipsy, even though it says Kipsy in it, but the Perkipsy tapes. And it's literally a sentence synopsis or description which says hundreds of <laughs> hundreds of videos, tapes of murders, torture, and dismemberment shows a killer's decade long reign of terror. Now, from what I've heard, this is based off of a real, well, sort of loosely based off a real murderer, which was the Poughkeepsie Killer. I believe that was like his title. But this one is, man, it's really gruesome. <laughs> uh, if you don't like found footage movies, you won't like this. It's documentary style, but a lot of the killings take place as a uh, found footage style. You can probably hear Law & Order. I'm sorry, I don't know where the remote is. Um, uh, wow. It's, I watched this for the first time last year after someone suggested it to me, and it really did scare me really bad. I don't, it's very realistic. It's something that probably is happening right now, and probably 
has happened before, just not in the more theatrical version that it does happen. Um, uh, somebody commented that I couldn't help but feel slightly unsafe in my own home after watching this. That's how I felt. I was terrified. And I talked about this a lot with my friend. I always recommend this horror movie to horror movie fans. But it's definitely an acquired taste. It's not just torture, torture adult erotica films. I don't want to say the word because I don't want to be that unfamily friendly. But um, it was basically directed, it was directed, written by, and story was by the same guy, plus his brother, I'm guessing. They have the same last name, or maybe his his husband, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to say that. <laughs> that sounded really bad. It is a movie that I really, really love. Um, as I said, it's a lot of torture, a lot of dismemberment, very, very graphic with it, and uh, it's crazy. If you've seen or watch a lot of horror YouTubers, you've probably seen a clip of it before. Um, I know I've seen it on 4chan before, on like a cryptic or SCP related thread on the paranormal board. Um, and I'm pretty sure I've seen it in like top 10 scariest creepypastas caught on camera in real life or top 10 scariest SCPs caught in real life. Something of that sort. Um, it is the scene where a lady has a what's it called? Like a gag in her mouth and there's a guy with a plague doctor mask and they're like, it looks like they're crab walking over to her. That's from this movie. It is, I don't remember what her name is, <laughs> but it's, you can find it under like, well, you don't want to Google it <laughs> because it sounds really bad when you Google it. But it is a great movie. It talks a lot about, like, um, murdering. It shows Stockholm Syndrome at one point, which isn't really a spoiler. But this movie is one of my favorites. I am planning on buying the physical copy of it because it was never released to theaters or on DVD, I don't think, until a long, long, long time ago. Oh yeah, it says... John Eric, whatever his last name, <laughs> 2007 horror film that has finally hit the home video in the past week, but this was from 2017. Uh, I'm really planning on buying it. I have the digital, digital copy of it. I have a digital copy of all of these, but this is one of the movies that I love a lot. I cannot say enough good things about it. If you like horror and you like found footage-esque movies and you don't mind gore, a lot of sexual stuff, not a lot of sexual assault or anything, but really weird fetishes are in this video, or in this video, in this movie. So just keep that in mind. It's, uh, it's a great movie. I love it. And hopefully you will too if you ever watch it. Anyways. I'm going to end this video because this is 20, almost 23, or 23, almost a few minutes long. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. And I realized I went on a tangent at one point, but I really love horror movies. So hopefully the next video will be a normal ASMR video, but I probably will make a favorite standalone movie. Um, the Poughkeepsie Tapes is um, not part of a series. So I've been told, but there's like speculation at one point that it was going to be part of a series. But I hope it's not because I love just the standalone movie. Please don't make it a series, even though I really love the work. It's not, it's not worth it. You don't want to ruin it. Okay, so <sighs> I might talk about my favorite, more of my favorite horror movies at one point, but. For now, I'm going to end this video, and thank you for watching, and hopefully you don't mind that this is coming out November 1st rather than Halloween like I had planned. Okay, goodbye for now.